In this video, we're going to talk about building a launcher or opener file that people on your team can use to open a FileMaker file pretty much automatically. Now in other videos, we've talked about setting up your FileMaker file to be shared on the network or the internet by a FileMaker server. That way your team can access the same FileMaker database and collaborate and share the same information at the same time. It's one of the true benefits of the FileMaker platform. So once you have your database or maybe even a copy of FM starting point and you get it up on a FileMaker server, well how do you access it? Well you could go into a copy of FileMaker like this and you could tell everyone, well you have to go to open remote then you have to tell them to add the IP address of the FileMaker server and so you have to give them the address and you have to explain to them what an IP address is. So you have to tell them that it's going to be 75.40.138.5 or something like that and they say okay and then it doesn't work and why doesn't it work? Well they typed the number in wrong and of course they don't see that because they actually typed 75.40.138 but it was actually 75.138.40 they invert the numbers or something like that. And so the point is is that this is a weak spot in explaining to people A, the technology of how to access your FileMaker file. Wouldn't it be just easier if they could actually have a little launcher file, maybe something like this, a single little file like this, that they just double click and it automatically opens the database on their computer for them. Now this is actually not the database right here. This is a tiny little file that sits on their computer. It's a FileMaker file, but it's an opener file or a launcher file. And all it does is point to the actual file on the internet. This file actually contains the IP address and it could contain the actual username and password for that person as well. It just depends on what you want it to do. But in this case, check it out. I can double click the file. It brings up a startup screen. and then it brings up the database. Now we're actually accessing this database from a server in New York while I'm recording this video here in Santa Clara, California. So that performance isn't too bad. Now this is actually a live database for a real customer. So I'm not going to dig into it too much. But that's all it was. If I was going to share this database with one of the employees, I wouldn't have to tell them, oh here's the IP address and you have to go to open remote, all that type of stuff all I would have to do is email them this file right here. I could actually email this to their iPad or email it to their Mac or Windows computer and all they would have to do is have FileMaker Pro installed on their computer already or FileMaker Go for that matter. Pretty slick. So this is what you call a launcher file. So what is a launcher file? Well under the hood a launcher file is pretty straightforward. Here's another launcher file right here I can show you. This one opens our master copy of FM starting point. Now the graphics at the beginning are completely arbitrary. And in this case it's asking me to authenticate with a username and password. It opens up the database for us right here. But how does it know which database to open? And how do you set this up? Well it's real simple. The idea of the launcher file is that it homes in on the IP address of the server opens a specific file and then it closes itself. The launcher file doesn't stay open. Well how can we tell what this is doing? Well let me show you. I'm using FileMaker Pro Advanced. I'm going to go over here to Tools, down to Script Debugger, over here on the right, and I'm going to double click the, this launcher right here. It's going to run the startup script right here. It's going to run these commands right here which are pretty straightforward. and you can see that it's brought up this layout right here. Next, it's going to tell the database to open this file right here. But this is a file reference right here. So how does it know which file to actually open? Well, let me show you that. I'm going to cancel the script right here. I'm going to turn off the script debugger. And I'm going to go over to File, Manage, External Data Sources. 
And in here you can see that we have the SOS Metal Products Database. It's running over here at this file path right here. Here's the IP address of the server, which we put in. Now you could also put in a domain if you have a domain set up for your FileMaker server, like at fmserver.com or .net or some sort of address like that. You can actually set up a domain instead of an IP address. In this case, they don't have a domain set up. So we're just using the actual static address. But you set up this external data source right here. Once you have that set up, then you can go into scripts, down to startup script, which is the only script in here. And right here, it says open file. Right here, it allows us to specify one of the external data sources. We only have one, and that's this one right here. So we call this external data source, and this external data source has that hard-coded path name in it that we saw previously. So how does FileMaker know to run this startup script right here? Well, that's pretty simple, because in this file right here, we can say file options, script triggers, on first window open, run the startup script. Pretty straightforward. So when this file first opens, it runs this script. This script executes. It gets down to this command right here, which is the critical command. It's going to open this external data source, and this external data source has a hard-coded path name to this database right here. All this executes automatically at high speed. And while FileMaker is attempting to connect and download the information, the user sees this nice little splash screen right here telling them that yes, they're loading the SalesBeaver Collaborative Database. But they could be opening the FM Starting Point Database. And of course, in this case, once it gets to a certain spot in the system, it's going to ask them for their username and password. The other database was set to automatically enter the credentials. So you could have it enter the credentials automatically or prompt them for their username and password. That's a separate issue that we cover in our FileMaker Pro video training series. So there you go. If you're interested in getting a copy of a launcher file to play with, to download yourself, I'll post one up under RC Consulting, under Free Downloads, down at the bottom of the page. And you'll be able to click right there and get a sample of a launcher file that you can customize for your own solution.